Today I'm going to take you on the second garden tour this year. It is the last day of May. It's been two and a half weeks since our last tour and so much has changed. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're not, welcome back. My name is Kayla. This is Five Canadian Acres. We are gardening in a zone three in Alberta, Canada. We start up here in our first bed. Everything's gone crazy. It has been very hot and dry. So my cool weather crops like my radishes and my spinach have all bolted. They've gone to seed. It's not a total loss. I can feed a lot of it to my bunnies but really I'm gonna have to either do another planting somewhere where it's shady or just wait until the fall. These radishes are a watermelon radish that we planted later, so it's still growing. And actually, if we go back here to these little guys, these are a French breakfast radish. They have actually done the best. Really nice radishes off of there. And they also have not really bolted like the other ones. So I'm gonna leave some of these in and let them go to seed. We can eat the radish pods but also I will save these seeds because they're a good radish for our climate. These peas here are a sugar magnolia. You can kind of see a little bit of purple there. So I know that the, they're going to have purple flowers. Nothing has come up yet, but hopefully soon we will get some flowers and peas off of those. I did have peas along the back with pretty poor germination. We have a couple coming up. These are a sugar snap. I did replant them. So hopefully we'll get a few more to come up. This back here is a lettuce. It is a romaine. I believe it's Coss Island. And it's actually from my saved seeds doing really well. We're going to have some nice lettuce there. Over here, this is from saved seed as well. It is a black seeded Simpson. The pansies are looking really nice. And then back here, these peas, these are a snow pea and they are putting off flowers. Just started about a few days ago. And that's going to be nice because that means in probably a week, we're going to have some peas to eat. I also have some Swiss chard back here. This is a Ford Hook Giant. And then over here, I have a Red Ruby. At the end here, these are the onions that I grew last year and saved and replanted to grow for seed. And as you can see, they're starting to form a little bulb flower. So we'll get some seeds for next year. These are all the new beds my husband built this year. We've got them all topped up and somewhat planted. These are marigolds that I started from seed. They're going to be blooming soon, hopefully. All along the back, I do have my cherry tomatoes planted. I ran out of labels, so what I actually did was just take a video when I planted them of what was planted where. So I'm going to have to go get some more labels, and those will be correctly labeled for next garden tour. I do know I have some sun gold, sweet gold, atomic grape, and then a couple other different varieties. And then in the front here, I still have to plant. These are my micro dwarf tomatoes. These ones are a fat frog. And then these are the tiny Tims that I grow every year. These are my rosy fall, my hanging basket tomatoes. So those still need to be planted. All of these tomatoes still need to be planted. They don't look the best, but once you get them in the ground, they will grow really well. These are all my like red tomatoes and medium sized tomatoes. Nothing's planted in the front here, but at the back I've started some melons or planted seeds. Nothing's coming up. These are a sugar baby watermelon. And then this is a farthest north melon. I did start this from transplanted it. It's going good, but I see here we do have one coming up. That is like a green flesh, like a honeydew style melon. And then we have three cantaloupe style, a, just a cantaloupe I found at a seed swap. This is a Minnesota midget, and this is a hope melon. I transplanted this one, but it's not doing very good. And then I also have some Kajari melon. Back over here, this is the new bed we kind of created this year. And this is my rose bush that I've purchased. It's actually for Mother's Day. It is going to bloom very soon. It's, it's actually a new rose that was developed in Canada. And this is the first year it was released. It's a yellow rose, which is my favorite color. I planted some herbs all around. There's a wild bergamot, which I think is like a bee balm. We have some garlic chives. You can barely see these guys, but these are a nodding onion. Some winter onion. My lavender bush down below didn't come back, so I'm trying some more. This is a Munstead lavender and some thyme. I also have all the ranunculus planted in these guys all around, and hopefully we'll get some flowers for those soon. Let me go up here. This table is a little bit of most stuff needing to be planted. Got some marshmallow, onions, more tomatoes, catnip. We got squash, a few random things that my son planted, and then lots more tomatoes. A lot of them are actually extras that we're going to be giving away to some family and friends. And over here, our chives are in full bloom. They are so pretty. 
and you can actually pick these and they're edible and I love to just throw them on a salad for a little bit of color. We have our carrots that we just kind of threw into the ground. My son did. Had a lot of fun. Very sporadic but we're just going to interplant it with other things. I did put some tomatoes here. These tomatoes are called a Kalinka Malinka. They are actually only grow about two feet but are supposedly really heavy with fruit so we'll try those out. More pansies and then again these are all my extra tomatoes that really need to get planted so we're gonna have to give those away soon. And this chamomile at the end which is starting to get a little bud there. More chives back there. This here is a dahlia. I planted two of them but that guy is dying dead. That one's looking to be good still. And then this is the garlic, the extra garlic we found and planted in the spring. It's looking really good. But compared to my other garlic below that we planted in the winter, this stuff is very skinny. We have a few. These are a white Spanish onion that I planted. A little bit more extra tomatoes. All of this empty space, I'm going to top it up with a little bit of compost. And that is where the peppers are going to be planted here next week. This is that big volunteer spinach patch that has done pretty good. We've eaten a little bit and the rest will just go to the chickens. And moving along down below, we've got our three pots of potatoes that are looking really good, as well as the cilantro and tarragon. Over here are some apple trees. We've put in some nice big pots to grow big. And I went to a local plant sale. I found a rhubarb and this is a yellow raspberry and that stinging nettle I'm gonna plant somewhere. We've got some blueberries here. This one's always been scraggly. It has a little bit there, but this one's always done really well. And if I look down in here, we can see we have some flowers. So hopefully we'll get some blueberries. And my cat's coming for a visit. And there's one more blueberry bush there that struggled as well. But I just can't tear it out if they grow. Nothing in these guys. I planted some bulbs in here and I can't remember what. We'll see how that goes. And there's a little volunteer, marigold. Another volunteer marigold. And this is a volunteer ground cherry. So we're gonna let that one grow. The grapevine is looking really good. As you can see, it's going all the way up. So we're gonna get some more grapes this year. Now this is always really weedy, but I did plant asparagus here like three years ago. It's never done well, but I have all these raspberries popping up. So we're just gonna let the raspberries grow here. The asparagus grows cool. And then we're gonna have a nice row of raspberries. They're just the wild raspberries that grow all around here. And this big monster down here, this is horseradish. Planted that last year from two little half dead little pieces. And it has done so well. You can see it's starting to flower. So that will be nice and established. I'll be able to start harvesting some horseradish. The tulips are already spent. They do not last very long, but they are beautiful while they last our cherry tree here we have a ton of blossoms on it it's really weird it's blossomed very strangely like the bottom blossomed and then the bottom if you can see a lot of the blossoms have already actually been pollinated and we are getting little cherries growing but yet there are still lots that are just opening up top either way we are going to have more than the three cherries we had last year this is a cupid cherry so it's like a it's a sour cherry but a bit on the sweeter side that was developed by the university of saskatchewan for our cold climates and it has done really well. It did too good last year because it was eaten by deer. But this past winter, it did not get eaten by deer. So it's growing to its full splendor. Oh, and I forgot about those guys. I planted some daffodil bulbs. And we did get a few little pretty daffodils. And our good old strawberry asparagus bed is looking awesome. We have a ton of strawberries coming in. They are everywhere, so we are gonna have a lot of strawberries fairly soon, hopefully. And we picked a lot of asparagus, letting a lot of it now go to their fronds. I'm gonna do a bit more research because I've read if you let them go to seed, they might not put so much energy back into the crowns, but that is something I'm gonna need to read up about because there are a lot of fronds here. Go back over to these beds. We have, this is a red Russian kale looking really good. Might have to have some kale chips tonight. And then we have two of our TR cabbage. There is a little bit of damage here. I haven't covered them. So I'm gonna have to look for little wormies. Because it look, but it is starting to form a bit of a head there, which is really nice. This lone little broccoli, it's growing. 
This is a purple cabbage, or sorry, it's actually called a red express cabbage. And this is a purple kohlrabi, which looks like it's basically just gonna bulb up right here and be a big bulb. Back over to this side. This is a dwarf curled scotch, one of our favorite kales. So I planted some of those from transplant. I have a few chives come back from last year. And then these are all the early Copenhagen market cabbage, which are actually getting some decent heads on them. Behind them in the bed, this is all my broccoli. So we have a Calabrese, so these are an heirloom one. And then on this side is a Sun King hybrid. The heirloom ones, these ones are looking really good, but they were actually in better shape. These guys were half dead when I transplanted them, but they are kind of coming around. So hopefully we'll get a bit of a broccoli harvest this year. Sorry, the garden in, our, in me needs to weed. Now over here, these crazies are going to need to be picked. These are a Chinese cabbage. I'm not actually sure at what stage I need to pick them. It's my first time growing them, but I mean, they're getting huge. And I probably planted them way too close together, but we're gonna hopefully try to eat some, do a little stir fry, and then also we're gonna try some kimchi. And then there's just some more onions I planted for seed over here. These two on the end are actually a yellow onion as opposed to the white ones. And go over to these beds. As you can see, we got a lot of cardboard, so I'm starting to lay it all down. We're gonna get some, we've got a wood chipper, we're gonna chip some wood up, and then this will all be, hopefully, no weeds. <laughs> but in the bed here, we have all cucumbers that I planted from transplant, so I started them a little early. This one is called Ghost in the Wind. It's from a seed swap and I Googled it. I didn't see anything. So once we get some growth, we'll see what kind of cucumber it is. Next to that, we have a lemon apple and then dragon's egg, a mini white and a homemade pickle. This is a quarantine hybrid. It used to be known as Cool Breeze. Everybody recommends it. I'm gonna try that for the first time. And then lastly, we have a white spine, which just means that those little dots on them are white instead of black. In the front I've planted all beans. These are a yellow round pod kidney wax bean. We have some dragon tongue beans and these are a royal burgundy so a red one and they've popped up pretty nicely. Nothing planted in these beds yet. I might do those big long tomatoes up the back and over here in this bed we have more cucumbers and beans. <laughs> in the back there, that's an Armenian, which is actually a melon, but you can eat it like a cucumber. And then these ones are all a tasty green. It's actually there, there, and there. So those are just a long slicer. More beans. I'm really trying to figure out what green beans we really like, if there's a difference. So these ones are a provider. This is a blue lake bush. These are a stringless green pod. And these are a tender green improved we'll see what grows well and what we really like to eat if there's any taste difference between them and we'll let you know and of course these are my overwintered green onions which are actually looking really cool they're going to be flowering and making some seeds from there we have our tulip bed which i had a few yellow ones and they've spent these purpley black ones are going pretty good they won't last very much longer I'm gonna get in here and weed everything, remulch it, see what happens. This is yarrow that's come back from last year really well. And we also have some catnip, which my cats eat all the time and it still grows really well. As you can see, it gets rolled over and ate on, but it's a very hardy plant. Some people don't like cats in the garden. They can make a mess, you know, go to the bathroom, dig up plants. But I love these guys because they keep the mice away. They are always out here hunting, so I feel like I don't have that mouse or vole problem in the garden. And then over here on this side, I think it's a Tithania torch, or it's also known as a Mexican sunflower. They're supposed to be big and bushy and really pretty flowers. They're doing really well. Hopefully we'll get some flowers off of those. We have our newest bed. This one I have shaped. We actually have another new one there. I haven't shaped or planted anything there yet. In this bed, nothing's coming up. I will tell you what I planted. We have pole beans, the yard long oriental noodle bean up this one. And in that one, I planted some cascade lem lemonade cascade beans. And I have two rows of pickling cucumbers. And in the middle here, these are a black turtle bean. 
And then I decided let's do some flowers. So here is all of a sunflower. I think it's called a picato. So a bunch of different red colors. Over there I planted a Queen Sophia marigold. They're kind of like a ready burgundy marigold. And this I used a whole seed packet of cut and come again zinnias. So hopefully we'll get some pretty ones there. And this bed is one that needs to be revamped still. I'm thinking we might actually plant our rhubarb here, so I'm gonna need to clean this up fairly quickly. Let me go down here to our tomatoes. I did take the stirrup hoe to it. That's where it's just like a round thing and it kind of scrapes the ground. But you can see the stuff pops back really qu quick. So I'm gonna have to come probably in here and hand weed it. But these are all our tomatoes. So we have some Hungarian heart. This guy needs to be tied up here. It's getting big enough. I have four of the Hungarian heart and then two of everything else here. These are a Ponderosa pink. And these guys are a old German. And then we go to Thornburn's terracotta. You can see they were all kind of leggy, but since been planting, they're just really nice and bushy. Hillbilly potato leaf struggling along these are gold metal so if you see this here this is actually sunburn these were in the greenhouse and i figured oh they're hardened off enough but no they weren't but that's okay because as you can see as long as they're established enough they'll grow out of it next down the line we have a limony and lastly is called a golden king of siberia there's a genovese basil planted here as well and then all the way at the other end, I have planted basically basil at the end of each tomato aisle. This here is a holy basil. And I don't really see anything coming up yet. Let me go to our front row. I have a dark opal basil planted here. We have four of these Elizabeth Roma tomatoes. And then three of these San Marzano three of the Amish paste. I'm really taking this year to grow a lot of different varieties of all the things to see what we really like, what grows well in our climate, as well as what can withstand some pest damage or those cool temperatures. Next comes Cherokee purple. We have two of those, two of the Paul Robeson, two of the black crim. These ones are called a Sunfire Flare. And then an Aunt Ruby's German Green and a green zebra. And then actually down here, I planted some cinnamon basil. From the tomatoes, we'll go out front. This is electric fence. It's not electrified, but it's done really well to keep my dogs out of this garden bed. And it's actually really easy. I can just push it down and step over as I fall on my face. <laughs> just cause I said that. In this first row here, we have some celery. It's growing really good pretty small but this spot stays fairly wet hopefully that will help it and then down here we have onions these are a Kelsey onion so they're gonna get really big bulb up it's gonna take them a while but some of them you can see have little bulbs on them already and then at the very end here we just planted some zinnias which are coming up nicely we'll have some pretty flowers the next row over we have two different types of carrots all up the side these ones are a Karuda, Karudo, so that's going to be a really big carrot. These ones are a Royal Chantenay, and then we have some snow peas that are just coming up. These are more of the sugar magnolia peas, as well as more carrots on either side. These carrots are a rainbow blend and then a black nebula. The next row over, same thing. I have peas down the middle. These peas were old seed and they did not come up. Actually, I had one come up because I was like, did I not plant anything? But I did have one come up so that I know I did plant something. I went ahead and reseeded and they're just starting to come up now. And as well, we have two rows of carrots down beside them. And these carrots are a Napoli carrot and a Scarlet Nance. It looks like these ones came up sparse, but they were actually a pelleted seed. So they're way easier when you plant to get them the right distance as opposed to those where you just kind of sprinkle them in and that's going to require some thinning. We have two rows of potatoes. These I kind of did a modified roost out. These ones had more dirt. These ones are mostly just straw. 
They were only planted a day later. I'm not really a big fan. I'll, you'll see my potatoes at the end, straight dirt. They were planted like two weeks after these and way bigger and they are the same potato. So I think from now on, I'll just be planting in dirt. Our garlic, it's looking really good. As you can see, like from above when I showed you, these are so much bigger and thicker. I did pick my big bulbs to plant. We're gonna have some big garlic this year. More garlic down here. And this is the elephant garlic. As you can see, it looks a little different and it's actually part of the leek family. So it does look more like a leek. We're in the next bed are beets. They're coming up really nicely. These ones here are called a Merlin beet. And then I have just a Detroit dark red beet and kind of cool if you look. And then I have the golden delight and you can see here, these are like a red beet, they're red. But when you go to the golden delight, there's none of that red on there, which I'm glad I remembered because I almost pulled a few when I was weeding yesterday. <laughs> Beside that, this is turnips at this end and then rutabaga up the middle. These are a Laurentian and these ones are a Helenor rutabaga. And again, more carrots all down the side. You can see the theme here. I've mentioned it before. This is the year where I want to have too many carrots. I planted carrots everywhere. I'm probably going to plant more carrots under those tomatoes. These carrots are again the Napoli carrot and then black nebula. So these are the other potatoes I was saying and they yeah, two weeks later and they are just thriving here in the dirt. They're looking really good. Up front here I planted, these are a green zucchini. One came up, one's just come up and in front is a co gazelle and I only have one little guy coming up. He should make it. And then in front here, this is just a little random. I had onions here last year and somehow through all of everything, this guy made it so he gets to grow. I believe that's a patty pan. One of those came up and these guys are a yellow zucchini, which is one of our favorites as well. And then on the end here, we have our pumpkins. These are a Blanco pumpkin. They're a white pumpkin. I started these and transplanted them and they're doing really well. This is a Howden pumpkin. This is a transplant. And then I started another one from seed, which has come up. I'm gonna compare the two. More Howden pumpkin seeds from another year. Nothing's really come up. This is all volunteer dill. So I'm just gonna let that grow. And we can grow some dill here. Atlantic giant pumpkin seeds, very old. Nothing's come up there. These are another pumpkin seed that I actually just cut up on a pumpkin that had lasted from last year and threw the seeds right in the ground and they are coming out fabulously. I'm gonna have to cut a few of these off. I don't wanna pull them, I don't wanna disturb the roots, but if you just snip them right there, then you'll be okay. And they're gonna have lots of room to grow out this year. From there, we go to our final bed, which I wasn't gonna plant this year, but we figured we need the room. And you can see we have corn. This is all corn that we planted and it's coming up really nicely. There's actually another little thing down there I'll show you. This one's called a Simonette corn and it was developed in the Edmonton area, which is right by me. So we're really hoping that will grow well for us. I think it's only 60, 65 days, which is nice. This stuff here is called a Tom Thumb popcorn. So it's gonna be about probably that big, just a little tiny cobs and it's popcorn which hopefully we can grow our own popcorn. I did grow the glass gem popcorn last year, which we still haven't even popped. It's very pretty though, but it takes a long, long time. And this stuff is supposedly shorter and smaller. So we'll try it out. And in this little bed here, I planted black einkorn wheat. So it is a grain, but it's actually a very old grain. And it supposedly is good if you have gluten problems, but just trying to find some healthier alternatives. So we planted a little section of this black einkorn wheat to try. At the end here, this is called a country gentleman corn. The seeds were really old. I do have a little bit coming up, but I, there's a little one over there, but I don't think we're gonna get very good germination on these seeds. There we have our second garden tour. A lot has changed and a lot's going to change till the next one while we rip out all those past spent spring crops. Gotta plant those peppers still and throw many more seeds in the ground, as well as all the seeds need to sprout. If you missed my last garden tour, I'll put it up here. Go ahead and check it out so you can see how far we've come in just two and a half weeks. Don't forget to like and subscribe to follow along with all these garden tours this year. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.